Hak münevver mutahar müşteriflerine selavat şerifi getirenlerin ahir ve akıbetleri hayrola. Ağın ezvacı, tahire tebladı Resulü Sabzin Efendilerimizin ve sayrın biyazen ve Resulü Fihan Hazretten Ervar Şeriflerine Pirimiz Bilal Habeş Radiyallahu Anh Efendimizin Şeyhimiz Saydu Seyyüş Yabdül Kerim El Kudüs El Rabbani Hazretlerinin ve alel husus bu caminin banisi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman benzin kaymalarının ve kahve ehli imanın ervahı için Allah rızası için El Fatiha Yavuzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim İnna Allah ve melekatehu yusallun alen nebi Ya eyvellezin aminu sallu aleyhi ve sellima o teslima Allahümme salli ala seyyidina Muhammedun ve ala li seyyidina Muhammed Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Hay aleyhissalam Hay aleyhissalam Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillahi rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala rasulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahibi ecmain. Nehmedullah ta'ala ve nestahfir ve şerru an la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Neşhedü enne seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve zivacihi ve sahibi tabi khulafin raşdin mahadin min ba'di. Ve zemmet ala tahkik uzun muhammeti khulafa resulü ala tahkik umar el mu'minin. Hazreti Ebu Bakır, Umar, Usman ve Ali ve ala bakı sahibi tabi'in Ridvanullah Ta'ala aleyhim ecma'in Ya eyyuhal mu'minul hazirun ve takullah Ta'ala ve te'inna Allah hamel lezine tekvel lezine hum muhsinun Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala eşrafil anbiya'i men mürselin Seyyidina Mevlana Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahibi ecma'in All praises are due to Allah, Lord of the universes Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Isn't he the best who created the heavens and the earth and sends down for you water from the sky? Yes, and with it we cause to grow well-planted orchards full of beauty, of delight. It is not in your power to cause the growth of trees in them. Is there any Allah besides Allah? No. But they are a people who turn from justice. Isn't he the best who made the earth firm to live in, made rivers in its midst and set, it, and set on it immovable mountains and has set a barrier between the two seas? Is there any Allah besides Allah? No, but most of them know not. Isn't he the best who responds to the distressed soul when it calls on him and who relieves its suffering and makes you inheritors of the earth? Is there any Allah beside Allah? Little do they reflect. Isn't he the best who guides you through the darkness of the land and sea and who sends the winds as heralds of glad tidings going before his mercy. Is there any Allah besides Allah? High is Allah, above whatever they associate with him. Isn't he the best who originates creation, then repeats it and provides for you from the heaven and the earth? 
Is there any Allah beside Allah? Say, bring your proof if you are truthful. Sadaqallah al Azim. Ya Allah, exalt our Master Muhammad with blessings that save us from every fear and through which our needs are fulfilled and through which we are purified from every sins and through which we may be raised to the highest stations and through which we may attain the furthest degrees in all that is good in this life and in the life after death. Amin. Allahumma barik lana fi rajab wa sha'ban wa balikna ramazan. Ya ayuhal mu'minun, all believers, all praises and thanks are due to our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us life to be present before him in a day of Juma in the month of Rajab, Shahrullah. Shahrullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given this month his name and he has given us this month so that we may come closer to him. He has opened the three holy months with this month and inside this month he has put the nights of Raghaib and Miraj. Muslims are sleeping about the holiness of this month. Sahib al Sahib Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibris Rabbani is saying, Are we showing that much happiness that we're receiving the month of Rajab? If you do, then you're a winner. If not, cry for yourself. If you're not showing any care, if you're not showing any importance, if your heart is not moving you when holy months like that is coming, then your faith is dying. That faith is very dim and it is finishing. So during these months are the months that we may generate electricity to our faith and we may move again. We may start moving again during the month of Rajab. As a holy man said, the month of Rajab is the month of planting the seed. The month of Shaban is the month that the seed is growing and start giving the fruit. This is the month of Rajab, the month of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If anyone wants to catch their ego, and put the ego under their own control, then it is easy in this month. What will happen if your ego is not under your control? Then it is in the hands of shaitan. Then you will be the servant of shaitan. Ego is serving shaitan, the orders of shaitan. You are not created to make shaitan happy. You have been created and sent to this world to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with you and you to be pleased with him. Aren't we pleased with Allah? If you are pleased with Allah, then put a zipper to your mouth. No complaints from the mouth and no complaints from the heart. Say Alhamdulillah. What comes to me is coming to me from my Lord. Check yourself. Are you saying that by yourself? If you have one complaint, then you are not pleased with Allah because everything happens with the order and authority of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the friends of Allah, they speak the truth. O oh, believers, in this month of Rajab that we are in, it is a month to look at ourselves and ask ourselves and check ourselves. Am I being Allah's servant or am I being the slave of shaitan and my ego? As Shaykh Effendi is saying, Rajab is a month of planting. You cannot plant a seed in a land that is filled with wild creatures, that is full of weeds where the soil is poisonous. To even plant the seeds of Rajab that grow in Rajab and then give fruit in Ramazan, we need to first clean ourselves so that those seeds can be planted. Cleaning ourselves. First, we have to know what is dirty. We have to understand what is dirtiness in us. Majority are not understanding. Murids are not understanding. So how can you clean yourself if you're not understanding what is dirty? Training your ego, running from the traps of shaitan. This is the work of a believer. This is the work of an intelligent person. The Holy Prophet ﷺ is saying, the intelligent one is he who has controlled his ego, his nafs, and who has worked for what comes after death. The stupid one is the one who has put his ego in chase of his desires and who has vain hopes about Allah. Hazrat Sharafatin Busri, 
Qad Allah Sir is saying the Qazirat al Burda is Sharif. The ego is like a baby that if you left it alone, it would grow up. But it will always want milk. But if you wean it, it will be weaned. So keep its desires in check and beware that it does not overpower you. Verily lust, when it overpowers you, humiliates or destroys. The ego is our enemy. Whatever the ego is commanding us to do, whatever the ego wants, it is not good for us. The ego's job is to kill us. Our job is to protect ourselves against the enemy. Sultan al awliya Shri Maulana Muhammad Nazim Adil Haqqani Qadda Salah Sir is saying, Holy Prophet wasalam, said to his companions, We return from the small war. Now there is another powerful enemy in front of us that we must fight. They were asking, Ya Rasulullah, how? We came through such a heavy burden through that fighting. What can be Jihadul Akbar? What was the answer, Rasulullah wasalam, Jihadul Nafs. Jihad against the ego, it is bigger. The command from Allah Almighty, fight your nafs. You need to fight your most dangerous enemy, your nafs, your ego, and you must kill that one. Because the holy command is, فَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ And Allah Almighty is addressing all Muslims. If you are not fighting and killing your ego, my divine presence, heavenly levels, are not going to be open to you. If you're not fighting your ego and killing your ego, my divine presence, its heavenly levels are not going to be open to you. Understand, do you know how you're going to defend yourself and kill your enemy? When the Prophet of the last days came, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he had to work the nafs of his companions, and these were like terrible dragons, but he made them disappear and led them from Asfal Safilin to the highest level. Since then, there has been no better superior community than that of the Prophet's companions, for their nafs trainer was the Holy Prophet himself. He promoted the gold. From the seven depths of the earth to the seven heavens, he led them to their heavenly stations. Trainers are those who have the approval of the Holy Prophet. Those who do not have them cannot possibly do it. Our duty to our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to submit this ego back to him. Our duty to our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is to return to him, having cleaned ourselves from that ego. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has made a condition of cleaning ourselves from that ego to have a guide. The sahaba kiram who are the greatest examples, submitted themselves to the Holy Prophet. And after the Holy Prophet, they submitted themselves to Hazrat Abu Bakr. And every generation of Islam, every generation of believers found a guide and submitted to that guide. The one with no submission is outside the servanthood of Allah. As Sultan Al-Arifin Hazrat Ibayazad al-Bistami said, the one who has no shaykh, his shaykh is shaitan. This is the reality. As our shaykh Sahib al-Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al-Kabrisi al-Rabbani, Qadaslasir is saying, the Holy Prophet is saying this to us, you cannot take care of your ego by yourself. You cannot take care of your ego by yourself. You need a master. You need somebody to fix it for you, to show you what is right and what is wrong. If you don't, then your guide is going to be shaitan. Shaitan is going to lead you, and you are still going to think that you are in the Sirat al Mustaqim, but you're already going to be in the wrong road. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the company of the shaykhs a means and a condition to acquire his love. And we cannot leave this world without getting the love of Allah. He is saying, O child of Adam, it is your right from me that I be an ashik for you. So by my right from you, be for me an ashik. And he is also saying, subhanahu wa ta'ala, my love is obligation for those who love one another in me. 
for those who sit with one another in me, for those who give generously to one another in me, and for those who visit one another in me. This is tariqat. Tariqat is to sit with a friend of Allah, to sit with those who are running after Allah, and to help each other in the way of Allah. This is tariqat, and this is the teaching that we are running after. This way, this tariqat is going to clean us up so we can plant seeds in the month of Rajab. Shaykh Afendi is teaching us about this, saying, Tariqat is to make a person to keep his face towards the Qibla, to prepare him to his destiny where he is going and to be ready always. And the only way to be ready for that is to have the love of Allah and the love of the Prophet in your heart more than anything else. If you don't have the love of Allah and His Prophet in your heart more than anything else, then you are not ready for Ahirat life yet. That means you still have attachments to this world. Something is holding you to this world. So you don't want to go where your place is. That's dangerous. So anybody who is in tariqat must make progress every single day and must fill up his grave with the necessary things that he needs because he's going to spend time in that grave or in the journey beyond the grave. All orders of Islam or all orders that all prophets came to give people and to make them to live according to those orders was only to clean them for the journey to where they came from, to clean them and to make them to enter into paradise. Nothing else. From all the prayers, all fastings, all zakats, all hajj, all zikirs, all good deeds and all voluntary worships is to prepare man to turn his face back to the Qibla and to be ready for the angel of death when he is coming to go clean, to clean himself in this world and to go out clean from this world. That's the whole meaning of this life. All other things that we are keeping, the works, the worldly wealth, children, this, that, and everything is an obstacle on our way. Allah is saying to us openly in the Holy Quran, all your wealth, your children, and everything that you own is only confusion for you. Isn't it? It's only a confusion. All the wealth that you have, worldly wealth, and the children that you have are only confusion for you. If it keeps you away from Allah, then it's a big confusion. If you use that properly in the way of Allah, then it is a big blessing, moving you towards Allah better. We must keep Allah and His Prophet priority, otherwise man is losing. There is no other way. We are asking our Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to let us to make his love, the love of our Prophet and the love of our Shaykh, to be the priority in our life. We're asking this Rajab to be a means of forgiveness and cleaning for us. We're asking to be cleaned from the dirtiness of our egos. We're asking to be counted as those who love the ones whom Allah loves. Amen. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك والحمد لكم شيء كبير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك يا رب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك يا رب لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك يا رب صبح القدس ما بنا رب الملائكة والروح صبح القدس ما بنا رب صبح القدس ما بنا رب إن دين عند الله الإسلام قام صلاة الله عز وجل الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر إشتوى لا إله إلا الله إشتوى لا إله إلا الله إشهد أن محمد رسول الله إشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على السلا هيا على السلا هيا على الفلا هيا على الفلا قد قام السلا قد قام السلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله